Born in 1940, Bruce Lee went on to be one of the greatest action movie stars of all time and the undisputed king of martial arts films with bona fide masterpieces like Fists of Fury and The Way of the Dragon. Yeah. And be flooded with a cocky feeling and then feel like pretty cool or not. Very few men could do the things that he did, but is there a chance that he came across as being more than human? Because that's actually what he was? These are 20 reasons Bruce Lee may have been superhuman. Number 20. Reaction Speed Now, I want to be clear right off the bat. I'm not saying that Bruce Lee had superhuman level strength or could run at the speed of light or anything like that. Yes, the video is about evidence that Bruce Lee was superhuman, but it's a little more nuanced than that. As noted, when many people perceive the strength, speed, and ability of Bruce Lee, whether he was doing things for film or his live demonstrations, things were never as simple as he's just good. For example, many people have stated that his reaction speed was well beyond what should be capable for a human. But how fast was he really? Well, there's no definitive answer to that question, as Bruce Lee was an incredibly fast and skilled martial artist. However, some estimates put his speed at around 5 milliseconds, which is incredibly fast. He was once apparently recorded to have kicked a ball six times in one second, and then when you watch some of his fight scenes in the films that he made, you would think that the camera was speeding up to make him look faster, but it's actually not the case. It was just all his physical ability. How could anyone be so good that their explosive speed and reaction times were basically superhuman? Well, that all boils down to training. He was taught, yes, but Bruce Lee had a mentor in martial arts, and it wasn't all natural to do specialized training called isometric training, and it was meant to both build up the body and unleash explosive amounts of speed. If you looked at the body of Bruce Lee in his prime, you would know that he took his workouts very seriously, and thus, it's not impossible to think that he did special training to focus his mind and body so that he could go at speeds that many could not, or at the very least, could not do easily. It's also possible that he had tapped into his senses in a way that he could react more on instinct than guidance. For you anime fans, I'm talking about something similar to Ultra Instinct. If anyone could beat Goku, well, Bruce Lee would have at the very least welcomed the challenge. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. If there was ever any evidence that Bruce Lee was superhuman, this photo may be it. Truth be told, the image was snapped when he was in mid-stunt, in the midst of being hurled through the air. So no, not even he could fly, but what is insanely impressive about this is the stoic look on his face, the calmness and poise with which he's holding himself. He had just been thrown backwards off a truck to create the image, and anybody else would be panicking, or at the very least, the force would have caused them to sort of fold over. But look at him! He's calm, his back is stretched, and there's not a lick of panic on his face. Truly superhuman. As always, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below by using the hashtag SweetTopic. Number 19. The Dragon Flag Now we'll focus on the training regimen of Bruce Lee, because as stated, he was very much in shape and would often showcase that to his fans in films. But you don't get to that level of shape just by doing basic exercise. One of the moves he allegedly came up with was called the Dragon Flag. Go 1940. I'm 24 right now. Apparently for him, as his most famous movie was Enter the Dragon. The move itself is used to strengthen your core, which Bruce Lee definitely had in spades. So how do you do the special move? Well first, you lie on a decline or a flat bench and grab the edge of it beneath your head with both hands. You create tension throughout your entire body, starting with your traps, lats, and arms, and then on down through your core and legs. You swing your feet upwards until your body is almost vertical, but your shoulder blades stay planted on the bench. Keep your core tight and your body as straight as possible while pointing up in the air, and slowly lower your feet under control until they're just above the bench or as far as you can. Lift your legs back up in the air again and complete a rep. You can even up the ante of the move so that you're putting even more pressure on your core. You know, in case you really want to say that you're like Bruce Lee. When you gaze at a person doing this move, it's easy to think that it's basically superhuman, but it's all about getting your body to do what you want it to do. 
Perhaps that's why Bruce Lee allegedly created the move. He just wanted to push his body even further than before, which is something that many can appreciate. Number 18. The Punching Bag now, at first, it may seem a little basic for me to talk about Bruce Lee using a punching bag to train. I mean, after all, it's something that almost every fighter, regardless of their discipline, will use at some point in order to focus their punches, kicks, strikes, and more. The bag takes the punishment and forces you to exert yourself if you want to do damage. But when it came to Bruce Lee, he didn't do anything in a basic sense. He wanted to push himself, and so, in his backyard, he set up a punching bag that weighed over 300 kilograms. You may be thinking, is that a standard thing that you can get? The answer is no. It's actually something that Bruce Lee had custom made for himself so that he could push his martial arts skills even further. And there's even video footage of him kicking the punching bag, and it moves. Bruce Lee also holds the world record for kicking a 135-kilogram sandbag to the ceiling, which is about 5 meters high. So what does it all tell us about Bruce Lee? Well, first, he was really good at hitting things. But we pretty much knew that already. The important thing here is that he was so dedicated to his craft and improving his training regimen that he would go far above and beyond what anyone had expected of him, just so he could go even farther. If we tried to hit that bag, we'd probably break something in our hand or foot. But when Bruce Lee hits it, the bag is the one that's in danger of breaking. One can only imagine what people would have learned from him if he was alive after his popularity had spiked. Number 17. The One Finger Push-Up there are many techniques that are associated with Bruce Lee, and some of them are so fantastic that it might seem superhuman or downright impossible. For example, one of his most infamous training techniques is the one-finger push-up. Many of you may think that it's impossible for people to do something like that, given how we typically use our whole hands to do push-ups, but remember, Bruce Lee was not most people. In fact, there is footage right now of him doing the legendary push-up, and if you're about to say, wait a minute, he's using a thumb and his index finger to do it, well, you need to remember that scientifically, the thumb is not a finger. So thus, it really is a one-fingered push-up. But how was Bruce Lee able to complete such a feat? Well, simply put, he had trained his fingers alongside the rest of his body. And I mean that literally. He knew that the fingers were equally as important as the other parts of the body, and if your fingers were strong, so too were your strikes. He would do dedicated workouts solely with his fingers in order to strengthen them. The benefits of this were manyfold. For example, by training your fingers alongside the rest of your body, you build up the joints in them as well as the other parts of your hand. The stronger those joints are, the better your grip strength is. And we all know that Bruce Lee wanted great grip strength given how he had wielded weapons in his routines and fight scenes. Watching him do this technique is almost awe-inspiring, and yet there are others who have learned to do it. And as in all things, it's all about dedication and building yourself up. In fact, that was one of the core philosophies that Bruce Lee had tried to impart upon his students. He didn't want them to think that they had limits on their bodies. He wanted them to push themselves to basically having none. Number 16. The Coin We're going to dive back into the speed of Bruce Lee, which has spawned many legends over the years, and some of them aren't exactly what you may think. For example, there was one technique that Bruce Lee allegedly used that went like this. He would have a person hold a coin, and then he would not only steal the coin from their hand, but replace it with a different coin before they even realized it. Yeah. And be flooded with a cocky feeling and then yeah. feel like pretty cool or an order. That would obviously have been incredible, because that would have meant that he would be moving faster than the eye could track, which would definitely place him at superhuman levels. But could he actually do it, though? Well, not really. In fact, what he was actually doing was a magic trick, featuring a special coin that would appear different once the person flipped it over as they clinched it. This is an important thing to note because while Bruce Lee is a legend, legends often create or help build up myths that detail their incredible abilities or perceived abilities. Not all of them are true, obviously, but I'm not saying that Bruce Lee was a fraud, because he absolutely was not. Even Lee knew the power of perception and people believing that he was more than meets the eye. Also, it should be noted that the human eye, under most circumstances, can track movement at up to 885 kilometers per hour. So while Lee was fast with his body, it's hard to see him going that fast and thus fooling the human eye. Number 15. Kicking Power there are many things that Bruce Lee was known for, but the one that many of his films highlights, much to the joy of viewers, was that he was a legendary kicker. 
His kicks were fast, explosive, powerful, and dangerous, and they were all a focal point of many of his attacks on his foes and rivals in competition. But once again, you can't help but ask yourself just how powerful were his kicks. Now, I've already told you that he could kick a 300 kilogram punching bag and make it move, but what about when he kicked a person? Many of you would believe that his kicks were so powerful he could send people flying, but was it true? Well, it's complicated. Scientifically, force equals mass times acceleration. Bruce Lee at his peak was under 150 pounds, but those pounds were basically pure muscle, and through his training he could apply a lot of speed and thus deliver plenty of force. If a person was simply standing up and he kicked them in the chest or stomach, there is little doubt that he would send them stumbling backwards. But flying backward? That would be a very specific kind of feat that I honestly don't have footage of outside of his movies. Obviously, his movies took liberties with some of his attacks to make it seem as though he was a one-man army that could never lose. Which he might have been in real life, but I digress. Another scientific principle that is important to note is that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So for Bruce Lee to kick someone so hard that they went flying, he himself would have to fly back a little bit himself. Now, that's a cool thing to think about, but not exactly in Bruce Lee's style. Number 14. The One Inch Punch Here's another legend that I definitely have to break down for you. Bruce Lee was absolutely a master of using his body to get the most out of every movement, and as we've already discussed, he trained his fingers to be just as deadly as every other part of his body. And when that gets mixed in with his explosive speed, it's feasible that even a one-inch punch would be near deadly. The irony is that this is a real move, and present in multiple kung fu styles such as Wing Chun, which is what Lee was learning when he first encountered it. The key to the technique is in the way that the punch is delivered. Instead of using the arm to generate force, the punch is generated by using the entire body in a coordinated and explosive movement. The power of the punch is generated by the transfer of momentum from the lower body to the upper and then into the arm. The one-inch punch is a complex and challenging technique requiring a great deal of skill to practice and master. Even Bruce Lee had difficulty with this technique which again, he had learned from someone else, the legendary Yip Man no less. He worked on his body and techniques in various ways, which included weightlifting and focus training, all to get the job done, and eventually he would be filmed making the move happen. But it's such a difficult thing to master that some people would simply prefer to use the three-inch punch, where they roll their hands into the target and use the force that they have to do great damage. This would be tested on Mythbusters by a pro martial artist and was quite effective. Number 13. Unbeatable? If you talk to almost any fighter who has serious confidence in their abilities, they'll tell you straight up that they feel unbeatable before every fight. But just because you feel unbeatable doesn't mean that you really are. When Bruce Lee was rising through the ranks in various competitions and in the public eye, he had an undefeated record as far as official fights go. That's what had made him such an expert and legend of his craft. He could take on almost anyone and beat them. However, in that same time period was another man who was known for being nearly unbeatable, the one and only Muhammad Ali. The famous boxer was often paired up against the martial arts master, and many had wondered who would win in a fight. The irony here is that Bruce Lee said that Ali would likely beat him due to the size difference in their bodies, and at their peaks, Lee and Ali could hit with the same power but Ali was twice Lee's weight, and that can add up in a fight. Furthermore, Ali was no slouch in the arena. He was a world champion and undefeated for a long time, all because of his blinding speed, punching power, technique, footwork, and more. Plus, you also have to remember that if this was a true fight, it would be one that would feature both in their comfort zones, so Lee likely would not have been able to use all of his martial arts against the pure boxer that Ali was. You also have to consider that Lee may have simply been showing respect to Ali and was not willing to bash a man that he considered to be a great fighter. It should be noted that in one of his movies, he had a real fight with Chuck Norris, and even Norris admitted that Lee was better. Number 12. Push-ups again. We're going back to the one-finger push-up, but this time I'm not talking about the technique so much as how good that he was at it. In 1964, at the Long Beach International Karate Championships, Bruce Lee would publicly demonstrate the push-ups that he could do and went on to inspire many others who have tried and failed to match the accomplishment. Bruce Lee could do 1,500 push-ups continuously with two hands, 
400 push-ups with one hand, and a further 200 just on his index finger and thumb. Some film even captures him performing a single thumbed push-up, and as I've already stated, it's something to behold. But going back to the records that he holds, it shows you not only the training that Bruce Lee was able to do with these numbers, but the endurance that the man had. And for the record, I struggle in doing just one push-up with both hands, let alone 1,500 of them. Number 11. Bruce Lee Ping Pong Now we'll watch a very calm and relaxing video of Bruce Lee performing ping pong. After all, the man is entitled to try something regular every once in a while, right? Well, wrong, because here we have a video of Bruce Lee allegedly playing ping pong with nunchucks. Yes, nunchucks, the weapon he made famous in his films and was never afraid to show off his skills with. If the video is believed, he could not only hit a ping pong ball with nunchucks, he could straight up defeat professional ping pong players using his martial arts moves in conjunction with them. And if you're thinking, well, this can't be real, I'm not sure if it is or not. As you can see, the footage is grainy, and furthermore, we don't directly see Bruce Lee's face during the contest. You may also notice that he's wearing the legendary yellow outfit that he wore when he used the nunchucks in a film. That would be an odd thing for him to be wearing at such a display and might have been used to further insinuate that this was Lee instead of someone dressed up like him. If it is Bruce Lee, however, then this is definitely going to add to his legend. Number 10. Slowing Down Remember how I talked about how Bruce Lee was so fast that cameras might have made him appear superhuman because they actually sped him up? Well, it's the opposite. Given the cameras of the time, Bruce Lee was so fast that he actually had to slow himself down in order to make his movements. And I'm being quite serious. In fact, there is very standard footage of Lee during an audition taping where he was asked to perform his kung fu moves for the camera, which was rooted in place, and he was doing it so fast that the person he was hitting didn't even react to it. When he performed on the Green Hornet, his action scenes had to be reshot so that Bruce would slow down, and then they had to slow down the action scenes further so it wouldn't look like he could punch and kick people without actually touching them. That's how fast that he was, the cameras of the time couldn't even register his speed. Imagine how cool he would have looked with modern cameras and slow motion devices. Number 9. Multiple Disciplines when you think about martial arts, and equally as important, martial artists, you tend to see people focusing on one style and then pushing that into perfection. Then you have those who are not afraid to dabble in many techniques to pick up new ways to fight and expand their craft, and that's part of the reason why mixed martial arts became so popular. The truth is, though, that Bruce Lee was doing these things long before anyone else, and certainly before it became the norm. In fact, he had developed his own technique, Jeet Kune Do, I said emotional content. A blending of ancient kung fu, fencing, boxing, and philosophy, which he began teaching instead of traditional martial arts. He was also a firm believer that kung fu was the one true style and tried to unify everyone under it. Number 8. Weapons Master Bruce Lee knew that to make a good martial arts movie, you needed to keep escalating things so that the fighting never got stale. In his legendary film Enter the Dragon, he could have easily relied on his martial arts abilities and wowed the crowd, but instead he delved deeper into his disciplines, pulling out multiple weapons that he could use flawlessly to entertain people and showcase his talents. <laughs> In the movie, he uses a bow staff, Kali sticks, and nunchucks with brutal efficiency and takes out all of his enemies with them, each one having their own style and purpose and Bruce Lee showing them off beautifully. In other words, if you're going to put a weapon into Bruce Lee's hands, you're going to find yourself giving a literal living weapon something that he can use to dispatch pretty much anyone. Number 7. The Fastest Kicks Going back to speed once again, Bruce Lee is said to have had some of, if not the, fastest kicks ever recorded. But could it be true? Well, it simply depends on who you talk to. Bruce Lee did have explosive speed and power, as noted before, and his focus and training had helped him to refine his craft so that he could put even more power and speed into everything that he did. If you look at videos of his kicks, you would think that it was a special effect, but as Johnny Cage once said, I am the special effect and I'm pretty sure that Bruce Lee would have kicked Johnny Cage's butt in a martial arts battle. 
Bruce just seemed to have another gear installed within him, which allowed him to do more than anyone else before or since. And while that's cool for us to talk about now, it didn't exactly make him popular back then. Number 6. The Fight for Kung Fu While Bruce Lee was a revolutionary in the world of martial arts, it didn't make him popular with the traditional users of the craft. The people of Chinatown were furious that Lee was training Westerners, and so they issued a challenge. They would select a fighter, being a kung fu master, and have him fight against Bruce Lee. If the master won, Lee would have to stop teaching in the area. This is where things got interesting, because the fight did happen, there are people who said that it happened, and there are those who were even there to witness it. However, both Bruce Lee and his foe, Wong Jack Man, claimed that they each had won. Lee had witnesses to say that he had won, and Wong Jack Man even tried to run away from the fight when Lee was winning. Either way, Lee did continue to teach Kung Fu, so clearly he won on at least some level, but we'll likely never know the truth about that legendary battle. And yes, there was a movie made about it, but you probably should not watch it because it's terrible. Number 5. Punching Speed so, how many punches exactly could Bruce Lee throw in a single second? Well, his record is eight. That's right, somehow he's able to throw eight punches in one single second, and that's very scary to be honest with you. It also backs up the various claims about his speed and how he had to slow down in order to ensure that the camera picked up his movement. Even then, you can tell in scenes like this one that he's not holding back, and thus his hand movements look like blurs versus actual punches. There's a reason that he had an unbeaten streak and is also hailed as one of the greatest martial arts masters ever. Could you imagine having to deal with a guy in a fight with all of those punches coming at you? I tremble just thinking about it. Number 4. 16-foot jump. Now you may think that this is another one of those legends of Bruce Lee, but I have a bit of a twist in this one. This story actually comes from someone who worked with Bruce Lee on his film The Way of the Dragon. The man was one of the extras who had fought against him in a key scene, apparently in the area they were filming in, and they wanted to get it down. That's when Bruce Lee decided to get it by himself by jumping 16 feet off the ground and kicking it off. Now to be clear, there was a can that was hanging up in the rafters about 16 feet off the ground. The man said that it wasn't a straight up jump, as Bruce had twisted his body upside down so that he could perform the kick. But he also said that Bruce was 100% unassisted and that multiple people had seen him do it. Number 3. The Dancer you may not have been expecting this one, and I've said it multiple times that Bruce Lee was a martial arts master, but he also knew how to use his moves in other disciplines, which included tearing up the dance floor. There are multiple videos of Bruce Lee dancing the cha-cha, and he does look very good. His footwork is precise, and his timing is perfect. He also has a lot of energy and charisma when he dances, and if you think about it, being a good dancer would help him to be a better martial arts master, as it's all about timing, footwork, and placing your body where it needs to be at the right moment. Plus, he also had a wife, and so he was likely dancing with her quite a bit. Number 2. Destroying an office. This is one of the more hilarious things that Bruce Lee is said to have done during his acting career. In the 1969 film Marlowe, <laughs> Lee received praise for a scene in which he destroyed an entire office through kickboxing and karate moves. In fact, one of the things you'll see in that scene is him doing an incredibly high jump kick to destroy an item. The fact that he was using non-kung fu moves proves just how good that he was at other disciplines and also proves that you shouldn't turn down an offer from a character that he's portraying. Number 1. World Record Holder now, not surprisingly, Bruce Lee has held many world records in his time. Some of them we've already told you about, and some of them are suspect as heck, and we couldn't find any proof of them, so it just goes to show how much of the legend of Bruce Lee has grown over the years. No matter how many records that he did have, the accolades of Bruce Lee go far beyond what he did on the record. He was a trailblazer, a fighter for human rights and ability, and wanted nothing more than to bring everyone together in ways that others didn't feel was proper. We lost Bruce Lee far too soon than we should have, and that's a terrible shame. That's all from the life and times of Bruce Lee and why he might not have been a human in the way that we all perceive. 
Do you think that Bruce Lee was truly extraordinary? Or was he simply a man who knew how to get things done in ways that others had never tried? You should let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out all of the other cool things that are popping up on your screen right now, and I will see you next time.